Hey there and welcome! In this one we'll be learning about TypeScript, its capabilities, why it's used and how it's used, and in the process we'll be building a simple movie library as you see over here. There are overall 11 movies I've listed over here. You can sort by name, rating and genre. This is all on the client side. You can also search for example Batman or Lord of the Rings, it will find it, but it's not the project that's important here, it's the type constraints that we'll be applying using TypeScript. So first of all, let's tackle the question what is TypeScript? TypeScript is overall more like an extension to JavaScript that introduces types, variable types and as well as function types. The purpose of this is that when you're working in a team, when one developer who's new to the team looks at your code, he'll know that that actually has to be a string, a number, a boolean value, whatever it has to be. And the new developer won't make, for example, some atrocious mistakes in the code that you have to later debug because the whole functionality is broken. It was supposed to be a number, but he gave a string in there. And this just helps out with the teamwork part of development. Many companies use it, so with that, Let's get started. One thing I want you to take note of is that down in the description there will be all our project files and if you come on to source you'll be able to find a starter files folder over here. Inside that these are the starter files that I will be copying over to the project to start with. It has some basic HTML implemented into it and also the CSS will be wrapped here as well. But apart from that nothing too crazy is going to happen. We'll be writing all the other stuff together. So to create a new project, I will be calling npm create vite at latest. Here I'll be giving my project a name, movie-library and choose React. Overall you can choose any other language that supports TypeScript, but I will be going with React because that's one of the most popular ones. So React and then simply choose TypeScript. I will open up this movie library that got created explicitly and now I'll be opening a new terminal and I will be typing in the command prompt npm install. This will install all the dependencies that React needs and once this finishes we'll have a look at what changed from JSX elements to TypeScript. So if you open up the source folder over here, there are no more JSX files present, instead there is TSX. Overall there is nothing that actually changed, but the TSX files are able to accept TypeScript syntax. That's all there is to it. Now open up our GitHub repo and pull in the new files from the starter files that I've provided. Once that's done, I will clean up our app for now. So I will delete all of the HTML here and instead we'll be having simply this h1 rendered over here. I remove these as well, the app.css and the other stuff can remain. And now if you give out the command npm run dev and run your development server, we'll have a look what this does for us. Overall, exactly what I expected, only the age one. So now we can start working in TypeScript. In TypeScript, the most important and the most used feature are interfaces. Interfaces are like classes in any other language, just like if you worked in any of the C languages, you'll be able to meet classes in an object-oriented way and these interfaces help us constrain what an object should have inside it. To demonstrate that, let's create a new folder in our source folder over here. It will be called interfaces. Inside that, in this project we have movies. So in the interfaces folder create a new file called movie.ts, not tsx, just ts. It's good practice if you have some more generic uh, interfaces to encapsulate them over here so you can simply import them later when you need them. To create an interface you simply type interface and then give it a name, for example movie, then curly braces and inside this just like an object would be you define key value pairs but instead of these being key and value, it will be key and type value pairs. For example, each movie should have an ID, right? There will be a number for this. This is a TypeScript specific type. It says that only numbers can come onto this. It can be floating numbers or integer type numbers. But if I was to put strings in here, that wouldn't work. And now put a semicolon and let's create another one like title. And it will be of type string. Now pay attention, this shouldn't be the string that has 
the first letter as a big letter, it should be the simple string, otherwise you will get errors. For example, you could also write an image as a source, which is also a string, but here is a rating that will have, it will be of type number, and this is really just the core of TypeScript. You constrain yourself to these rules. You could also have something like a boolean field, and it will be of type boolean. We won't be having that in our project just now, but take note that this is also possible. Another few things that I'd like to have is a description and a genre. This description and genre will also be of type string. Overall, a very basic interface, but we have our first TypeScript object, so to say. Now in our app.tsx, how do we apply this? First of all, I will import the movie. But you see, the movie is not importable. That's because you have to put export here at the interfaces. Once that's done, you will be able to import movie. It's right there and it will automatically fill this out for you. And if you go on to our GitHub repo, you'll be able to find in the main source code, the actual finished code, a movies array. This is just some pre-filled data. As if I copy this over, you'll be able to see that this really is just some pre-filled data. And what's important here is that it's a constant variable and you put a column over here and then define the type that it will be. Since it contains multiple objects and it's actually an array, you can put the type that you'd like. If I had other interfaces, this could be anything else. And then you put simple brackets to signal that this is an array. If it was a simple object, you could do it like this. But since it's an array, we have to put that there. That's basically it. Now I'd like to jump to the movie card in our components because this one is written a little bit differently from all the other components. Some might say this is an inferior method of writing TypeScript, but it's very flexible and it's very customizable. And back then I actually learned this this way. So the, all this movie card does is it receives a movie object and then calls to its values. As you see, the image source, the H3 and all the P tags. That's not really what we have to focus on here. What we do have to focus on is that for some reason I put in here an any field. Now basically using any just kills the purpose of TypeScript because then it converts it to be a simple JavaScript object and you, you can put anything in here. It won't constrain it. So when we are working with single components that receive props, we create individual interfaces inside that component solely for the props. Let me show it to you. So I create a simple interface and it will be called movie card props, meaning I will constrain what type of objects this movie can actually be. And all this does is it receives a kind of movie, but I have to import that movie interface that we've created before and refer to that. Now, this is not applied yet, but once we do apply it instead of the any over here, it will say that this as an object can only receive objects that are of type movie. If there was an extra field or there was one field emitted, then TypeScript would throw the developer errors that this is not permitted. This is not how it's meant to be. That's the power of TypeScript basically. And take note that when you're working with TypeScript, it's very beneficial to always create prop interfaces for the certain component. It makes code clean and it makes development easy. So that was one way that I wrote in here, but as I said, some may call this inferior, because what if I want to have the children component over here and I want to, for example, incorporate it here. That means whatever I put inside the component, you know how the specific children component works in React. For example, when you put an H3 here, instead the H3 is a component and I put whatever I want inside, it will get rendered at a certain place at that certain component. The same way, this is not handled. What I have to do is put in here the children and it will be react and actually let me import it react dot react node. This is what the children would be and now it would be incorporated similarly. There is a method that does this automatically and you don't have to import it like this. But just take note that if you want children to be rendered, I will actually just comment this out, then you have to do it this way. With this, our movie card component is basically up to date and we can have a look at a different type of component that I provided you with. For example, the movie list component. Now the movie list component looks a little bit weird, doesn't it? 
there is a react.fc and then any given in this angled brackets. What the hell is going on? Why don't we just simply use the column and then define the type there? Well, this is a way that handles the children props and many other things all together. You call on to react and then fc stands for functional component and take a look. Here there is a column and this column is basically just setting the type of the component to be this. And then in the ingot brackets, that's something called a generic. I can put whatever I want in there that's of that is of type an interface and i also put any over here because right now the map function doesn't know what type of object this is but we will be removing this it will throw us an error just ignore that for now instead as i said we'll be creating interfaces for each separate component for its props so the movie list props will simply be an object and what does this list actually do well, it basically just receives an array of movies and then maps them out. So as the movies should come in this object, it would be a movie array. But the movie isn't imported, so yet again we have to import it. And this is why I explicitly extracted this movie interface out, because it's used at multiple places. So all this is doing is we are constraining the props that this certain movie list will receive to be of type an array of movies. And now the editor doesn't complain anymore because if you are ma mapping out an array of a certain type, then the certain children will also be of that type and now it knows that it is going to do it like that. So it can refer to it as the movie when it's rendering out the movie card. Again, that's basically it for the movie list. And now we'll integrate all this together in the app.tsx and then maybe look at the search functions and the filtering functions. So to connect this all together in our app.tsx, all we have to do is call the movie list that we've implemented because the movie list already implements the movie card. And remember the movie list can only accept movies that are of type movie or actually an array of them. So this movies object that I've just made you copy over from the source code is actually what's coming in here. If you have a look at our library, this is exactly how it should be. It's working very well. Now we can move on to our search bar. So grab your search bar.tsx. As you see, this is using react.fc as a functional component yet again, and it's of type any. But I don't want it to, of, to be of type any. So instead, I will create an interface called search bar props. This interface will contain something we haven't covered before. It will contain an on search function on search. And this will be passed down over here. As you can see, this is just a simple function that receives a value. But how do we define this in TypeScript? Well, it's going to have parentheses and then and then an arrow and then what will be the return type? For this function, it's not going to return anything. But was it to return a number, it would be a number. Or a boolean value, it would be a boolean value. For no, it would be just void because it does not return anything. And you can define the parameters over here. For example, it will be the query because this is actually just a search bar. And the query will be of type string as whatever you enter into that search bar. Now I can come onto here and change this any to be the search bar props. And you also see that there is a function for handling the input change. Whenever you type something into this, it has the on change event hooked up. It also has a U state hooked up. But here the event object is also of type any, which I said is just murdering the purpose of TypeScript. So we have to change this. What is an event object going to be of type? Well, it's going to be of type react dot change event because you can also access a bunch of events over here. So change event and then angled brackets and you define what type of element are we looking for the change at. Well, it's actually an HTML input element just like this. But if you want other HTML elements, you can simply type HTML and you see that there are a bunch of elements available over here. Most of the time you'll be using HTML input element though. And this way we have this hooked up, it can get the e.target.value out of it, set the query and set the onSearch function. By the way, the onSearch function is only executed once you press the search button, but it's also 
executed whenever you handle the input change, so, so what every letter typed out. With this, our search bar should be good to go. Let's implement it in our app.tsx. But in our app.tsx, we first have to create some use states and some other stuff to handle rendering. For example, there will be a use state for filtered movies. And let me put this in brackets. Also, it's per set filtered movies. And it will be of type use state. Now, for use states, you don't have to actually provide anything. The base value will be the movie, but you can provide some syntax here as well in brackets yet again, as this is signaling generics, I can put in here that this can only be a movies array. Nothing else is acceptable in this certain use state. Down below, we will do something similar. It will be the sort option. The use state will be of type string, and we will simply put title by default. But you see, we've also defined a new type declaration over here that this is going to be of type string. Now let's focus on the sorting functionality first of all, because this is way easier. So const sort movies, this is going to be the name of the function we are creating, and it's going to receive some parameters. One thing to note about TypeScript is that you can also define the type of the parameters. For example, this will be a movie array, but then this movie array will have to contain certain values. For example, there will be a movies, that is of type movie array and an option which is of, ta of type string and it's still giving us errors because this is not actually the parameter definition this is what is the function going to return and we have to return it in a switch case statement i will copy this over because i don't want to type it out all this does is it receives the option and if it's of type title rating or genre, it will sort the movies explicitly, otherwise it will just return the movies. And when we apply this, we will be able to sort by these three categories. No, I just have to apply this sort movies. I will create a separate function for that. It will be const handle sort. It will be an arrow function yet again, and it will only receive an option of type string. Inside this, I will call the set sort option and the sort option will be set to the option that this receives and the set filtered movies because we have to actually update those movies and I call the sort movies function it will receive the filtered movies and the option. This way this is set up now we have to apply it in our HTML and all I'm going to do is grab this from the source code and paste it in. Here I'm just simply applying this as the e.target.value to this handle sort. And one last thing we have to do before we try this out is switch the movies to be the filtered movies instead. This way, if we come back and try our app, we'll be able to choose by rating and the order will switch up. We'll be able to choose by genre and we can switch back to the name as well. Now, as for the search functionality, it's going to be rather simple. I'm going to create a new function over here up above. It will be const handle search and this will receive a query of type string. In here, I will just lowercase the query. So no matter what you are typing, it will always be lowercase. I will filter out here the movies. This filtering works is by setting the movie's title and description to lowercase. And if it includes anything that's in the lower query, then it will get out to the filtered movies object. And then I can simply set the filtered movies to be the sort movies that we filtered over here and whatever sorting option we have currently set. This way it combines the two and they should be set up accordingly. Now what we have to do is below the age one, I will create the search bar and pass in the on search function, which will be the handle search. With this, if we jump back to our app, I should be able to search for, for example, Batman, Lord of the Rings, Interstellar, or Fight Club, and it's working accordingly. So we've built this little project using TypeScript. We went over how to render out the children, simple string, number, boolean, and all the other stuff, the functions, the arrays, interfaces. You will be needing all of this in real life, so I hope it helped. And if you found value in this video and would like to see more, please consider giving us a like, maybe even subscribe. Other than that, I hope to see you in the next one. Happy coding and God bless.